Adding dimensions to sketches is usually done after most of the geometric constraints are applied. Adding geometric constraints before dimensions allows dimensions to change the part in predictable ways. If there are not sufficient geometric constraints in place, the sketch may react erratically when dimensions are applied. There may often be other constraints that need to be added, so don't be afraid to add geometric constraints after you've already applied some dimensional constraints. Welcome back to Practical AutoCAD and Inventor, your source for practical solutions to your problems with AutoCAD and Autodesk Inventor. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe so you will be notified whenever new videos are published. Also, if you have any questions you would like me to answer, please leave a comment below. Now, on with the video. There's really only one dimensioning tool in Autodesk Inventor and it is the dimension tool right here. Technically there's two because there's this auto dimension tool, but I don't recommend that you use the auto dimension tool because it will apply dimensions that maybe don't really fit for the basic rules of dimensioning. So when you use the regular dimension tool here, it's going to recognize the type of geometry you're trying to dimension, and then it's going to give you the correct dimension style. For example, in order to completely describe this object, I'm going to need uh, two dimensions. We go back to the original plan here. You'll see that there are two dimensions in this view. There's a length here, and then there's a, uh, a width here. Alternatively, instead of showing the width, I could show you the radius of this arc, and I'll do it both ways in this video. So coming in here now, I'm going to start by adding my dimensions. Now a good rule of thumb is to always place your largest dimensions first and after you've, apla you've placed your geometric constraints. So I'm going to place this dimension right here and once I put it down you'll see that it gives me the opportunity to edit this dimension. Now the dimensions in Autodesk Inventor drive the part, not the other way around. So if I change the number on this dimension, it's automatically going to change the part. And this is significantly different from what happens in Micro or in AutoCAD. So now if I say I want this to be two and a half inches long, I can say 2.5, press enter, and you'll see that it automatically applies that dimension and it makes my part larger. Additionally, some of the lines start to turn black. This line right here has turned black which is telling me that it is now nearly fully constrained. If I look in the lower left hand corner of my screen, you'll see that it tells me that I still need one dimension to completely constrain this part. If I want to completely constrain this part, I'm going to have to tell it either the radius of this circle or the length of this line. Notice that when I hover over either of those uh, objects, it, show, it shows a different dimension. For example, if I hover over this, it gives me a little badge right next to the cursor that gives me a linear dimension. But if I come over here and hover over this part, the arc, it gives me a radial dimension. So I can click here and stretch this out and now click. It says, what do you want this radius to be? In this case, I want it to be one and press enter. And now it applies that dimension all of my lines are now turned black and down in the bottom right hand corner it says fully constrained. Again, having fully constrained sketches is important to having stability in your designs. It's a good idea to fully constrain your sketches before you move into uh, extrusion and that type of thing. Now if I didn't want to place this one, if instead I wanted to place this one, I can do that. So I'm just going to undo that last one and instead I'm going to put in this linear dimension here, tell it that I want it to be two inches, and now it matches what I had in the first drawing that I showed you a few minutes ago. If I want to add this one in, I can, and notice that it's already got a number on it, but something interesting happens when I put this dimension down. When I click, I get this notification that says adding the dimension will over constrain the sketch. Choose accept to create a driven dimension. If I choose accept, 
it still puts the dimension in there, but you'll notice that that dimension is in parentheses. It's in parentheses because it is a driven dimension. It is not a driving dimension. If I want to change this part, which is one of the aspects of parametric design that we really like, I have to change this dimension, not this one. So again, if I want to change the size of my part, I can change this dimension and say make it two and a half inches, 2.5, and it automatically updates this one. But if I come in and I try to click on this one, notice that it's grayed out. This is just a driven number. It's more like what you have in AutoCAD. I can't change the part with this dimension because it's driven. Okay, so you can put these in if you want, but realize it's not a dimension that's going to change the part. It's just a reflection of what you want to have. Now, for a couple trips, uh, tips and tricks that, uh, that experts use when they're defining their part. <clears throat> In order to do this, I'm going to create a new part here. And I'm just going to create some simple geometry. I'll create a rectangle. And I'll create a circle. Notice that I'm using some of the reference geometry, in this case, the center point there, in order to define this. Now, if my goal is to have the rectangle and the circle be, you know, kind of like the outside of my profile. <clears throat> I don't want the inside parts here. I can do that. Now, right now, if I come in and I modify this, there's no control over any of my geometry. But I'm going to get it about the way I want. And then using the trim tool, I'm going to come in and get rid of the geometry that I don't want. So I'll choose my trim tool and I'll say I don't want that. I don't want this. I don't want this, I don't want this. So I'm getting close to maybe the geometry that I want to have. But by trimming the middle portion out, now you'll notice that if I move this one, it's no longer lined up with that one. Part of the design intent of this might be that I want this line and this line to always be lined up. So you have to, the hard part about fully constraining a sketch is understanding the condition that you want your geometry to have when it's done, and then knowing which uh, tool to up, or which constraint to apply. So you really do need to get to know your geometric constraints and how they work. So for example, I know that this one and this one should be collinear, so I'm going to use that collinear constraint. And I'm going to say that I want this one and this one to be collinear. So now when I move this one, that one automatically changes. Okay. Likewise, at the bottom, same condition. I want these two to be collinear. So I'm going to say I want a collinear constraint between this one and this one. So now again, as I change it, it's automatically going to, uh, to update. The other thing that happened when I trimmed the middle of this circle out is now I can make this circle bigger or smaller. Um, and independent of this or this arc bigger or smaller independent of this arc okay so again if my design intent is that both of those arcs need to have the same radius same being equal i want to apply an equal constraint between that arc and that arc so now as i come in and i change one the other one's going to change automatically so now you can see that I've got a couple of issues with this. It still doesn't behave quite the way I want it to. Again, I want to center everything around this center point here. <clears throat> and part of that is if I expand, if I bring this way down, I want the amount of this line above the x-axis to be equal to the amount of this line below the x-axis. In order to do that, I'm going to apply a horizontal constraint between the midpoint of that line and the center point. So now notice what happens is as I move one up, the other one moves down. And now I'm actually very close to having something that I want. The only difference now is if I want this to be symmetrical both, about both the x and the y axis, notice that this line here is longer than this line here. If my ideal, again, is that those lines are the same length, I need to apply a constraint to them. 
which in this case would be, again, that equal constraint. I want them to be the same length. So I can say I want this line and this line to be the same. And now I've got enough geometric constraints in here that when I come in and use my tools to deflect this object, I'm going to get something that behaves predictably. So now the last thing I need to do is come in and add my dimensional constraints. I can say that, for example, I want the overall length of this from that corner, from that end there to that end there to be, let's say, I'm going to make it really big, 10 inches long. So it zoomed way out, okay. And then maybe I want the length of this line to be 3 inches. As you can see down here in the bottom right hand corner now, it tells me I need one more dimension. In this case, it's going to be that radius. Now, when I start to click this, notice that it's giving me a radius. But if I wanted it to be a diameter, I could right click my mouse and I could say dimension type and instead make it a diameter. But I'm gonna leave it as radius, put it down, tell it that I want it to be three and it's over, okay? I'm fully constrained, I'm ready to move on. I can finish my sketch and I can move into the constraint. The last thing, uh, the last tip that I'm going to give is to think about how parts will be constrained when you put them into assemblies later on and use your origin geometry to plan. So for example, if I had a bunch of pipe pieces and elbows and T's and that type of thing that I was going to assemble, draw all my parts and assemble, I'm going to uh, draw all of my parts around the X, Y, and Z axes so that as I put them into an assembly, I can use those three axes to help organize and constrain my parts in the future. So it's never a bad idea to think way ahead and plan.